Yo, what's up, homie? Holiday season's here, and we're kicking things off with a Blender and After Effects tutorial series. So every year, Old Man Klaus rolls up like a boss, throwing gifts your way. No biggie. This year, the deer hit the pits, and old buddy's rolling in with pure metal power instead. Man's really sliding into the season. Proper sideways flex, huh? So today, we're talking drifting, and don't even think about clicking off because the talk's gonna be lit. I'm no rookie behind the wheel. I've got physics down like the back of my hand. So don't expect any of that. Catch the universe's vibe align with the flow nonsense here, all right? We ain't here for that whack shit. Real ones go hard on animation, and that's the only way it doesn't look like the half-assed, trendy garbage everyone's hyping up these days. Forget the 12 animation principles. They're off for a smoke while we're adding some hardcore driving feel physics that'll make even Pixar's best reconsider their entire process. Especially when they find out I did this in the damn After Effects. We're gonna create such an animation that your virtual car will slide into turns like your dad walks into the garage, confidently sipping on a cold one. Buckle up, Uncle. It's about to get hot. And we start with the fact that we need a ride. What kind of drifter are you if you ain't got a beater? Zip up and dive into the garage. It's time to build your own beast. We need a technical drawing. Let's keep it professional. Hand a crayon to a three-year-old and you've got yourself a cyber truck. Huh? If he can pull it off, so can we. No excuses. This sketch will remind me for sure that the car has to have wheels and a steering wheel. At the very least, we need wheels. Or just two if you're some next level pro. But we'll stick with the classic version. As always, we go from general to specific. Let's start by creating the car's body. I add a reference to the scene to guide the modeling process. Next, I create a cube, switch to edit mode, and shape the car's body. Using the loop cut tool, I add extra polygons and adjust them. I add new edge loops to extrude the hood and part of the cabin. Then, I create wheel arches for the front and rear wheels. The rear arches will be barely noticeable, while the front ones will be larger and more defined. I select edges along the body where sharp shapes need to be preserved and add bevels. Then, I check how the mesh looks with the subdivision surface modifier applied. If needed, I make adjustments to the mesh for better results. After some tweaks, I've got the car body looking like this. To make material assignment easier down the line, I've split the body into two parts, each set to have different materials. So you don't fall asleep watching, I went ahead and created the rest of the car body elements off camera. I kept the polygon count low, to make the shapes easy to tweak if needed. Next, I apply the subdivision surface modifier, but only to the parts that need smooth curves. The body stays as it is. I bake the mesh. Instead of applying the modifier to each element individually, I select all objects and use the convert to mesh command. This step is essential for setting up UVs. But first, I'll optimize the models by removing unnecessary faces to reduce the polygon count. Next, I assign materials. For the tire tread, I used a PBR material, and the same goes for creating roughness on the chrome and simulating leather on the seat. Finally, I combine all the body parts into a single mesh for simplicity. I leave elements like the steering wheel, wheel axles, and the wheel separate, so I can animate them in After Effects. In Object Mode, I select the necessary objects, move the cursor to the viewport, and press the hotkey Ctrl plus J. Now it's all one object. So, who's crazy enough to drive this thing? Obviously, it's Santa behind the wheel. 
Dude's old as hell, but still solid, so we can trust him with this beast. He won't wrap it around the first pole. He's got reindeer experience, after all. He scores a bonus gift bag, and let me tell you, making it almost sent me into early retirement. Grabbed a cube, threw in some subdivisions, adjusted the points, messed with the shape, and boom, done. All right, we're almost ready to slam the gas. But first, we gotta do the rigging on your damn junker and After Effects. Then we'll send it sideways. This stuff's in the full Blender and After Effects course. So hit the site, grab this shit, and let's f***ing go.